Teaching English Radio India A radio series for teachers of English Brought to you by the British Council Hello and welcome I am Manisha Dag and I am a teacher and a trainer and today sadly is the final program in our series for teachers in India Our focus in this series is English language teachers who face large classes in difficult conditions. Teachers who have a big responsibility to help their students to develop despite a lack of resources in their schools and limited training opportunities for themselves. Our final program is a review of some of the key themes in the series and we have called it Developing Our Teaching. In this series we've heard that there's a shift going on in teaching in India from teacher centered and top down to more learner centered and active these ideas are set out in the national curriculum framework 2005 as students are now given more chances to think and to participate in their learning here's nidhi talking about how teachers are changing their approach i believe uh, the they will try to make the classroom more participatory and uh, it should be a more active classroom where they will involve the learners and instead of explaining they will try to tap on the previous knowledge of the learners you know they can ask them questions and they can see uh, what is the level of their learners and they can design some activities rather than explaining let the learners respond and let them try to uh tell the teacher how much they understand so we've been asking what does all this change of emphasis mean for teachers of english and what key ideas have teachers shared in our series good morning children good morning yes. okay today we are in the english class yes shall we do a new lesson in english today yes do you all like english yes shall we do with the lesson yes Hope we'll all enjoy it. Yes. Okay. We go into our classrooms with a purpose. So let's first look at planning. To be more learner-centered, we have to think: What is the student's experience of my lessons? Will they leave this lesson with some new language and some new skills? The main thing is the objectives. The objectives should be clear before the lesson. That was Virendra. To get the most from our often very short lessons, we need to plan ahead. Let's now hear from Shorya and then Sukanya. When you are preparing it's very important to understand the objective of the lesson. If it's not clear, make sure that you clear it in your head so that when you go to the class your your students are told well in advance that by end of this class we will be learning nouns or we will be learning verbs. So it should be simple and clear objective which can be achievable in that specified time so in the lesson plan uh, we write down how much time we are going to devote and uh, how much of the content are we going to cover secondly we are we also mention there what activities we are going to take are we going to make it a group activity or an individual activity are we going to do the lesson as a project and uh, what are the teaching aids we are going to use there how are we going to like interact in the class how much time are we giving for the question and answers because that constant interaction between the teacher and among the student is very important as namita told us in another program failing to plan is planning to fail on the subject of planning lessons teachers suggested some key points you need clear objectives time is short so you need to work out different stages in each lesson learners need to be active so include time for them to talk and practice and avoid too much lecturing by the teacher we also looked at using the textbook most teachers agreed it is a very useful tool but it is a tool and we should make it work well for our students how here's dina following a textbook blindly at least i wouldn't recommend it i think that uh, it you need to supplement it with other activities 
bring in extra resources that you can use to make the lesson uh, more interesting. We need to know whether what we're, what we're teaching actually is relevant to the group that we're teaching, whether it actually meets their requirements, and adapt or um, change the, uh, what you're teaching in such a way that it will benefit all the learners. There were lots of ideas to avoid just saying, open the book at page 24. Right in the beginning of the lesson, we are involving the students. We're calling for some active listening and active participation from the students. And then we can go on to our lessons. As Sukanya says, start each lesson with a warm-up activity to get your students talking English. This could be about what they've been doing at the weekend, or it could be linked to the theme of your lesson and the textbook. Then we can think of lots of ways to bring the textbook to life. Students can talk about their own experiences and interests. We can use objects in the classroom or bring some from outside. We can draw on the board, play a recording, and of course, newspapers and magazines provide a rich opportunity for classroom practice. Here is Kuheli. Suppose I'm teaching how to greet each other, and I get a picture in the newspaper or a magazine, someone is shaking hands with another. It is quite familiar, which we always get somewhere. So I tell my teachers, or I do it myself. Kuheli's example was using a photograph of people shaking hands to teach introductions and greetings. Pictures can be used to set up a dialogue or role play. Students can play the roles of the people in the photos. They can make up a short story in a group using some mixed up images. Teachers can also make their own simple materials such as flashcards with pictures or words for vocabulary practice or they write exercises and questions to go along with the reading text. Our textbooks are full of reading texts and we heard lots of ideas of enjoyable things we can do before, during and after reading those texts. For example, do you remember teacher Rita who started a reading activity by finding out first what her students knew already about the character Razia? So students, today we will uh, come to know about a story. The name of the story is Razia and her pink elephant. So do you know anything about Razia? Did you heard this name Razia? In history. In history. In history. You must have heard this name Razia. Razia Sultan. Yes. Razia Sultan. Razia was a was a was a queen as a first emperor or a queen or lady emperor of Delhi's history. Only when she's got lots of ideas from them does she introduce the reading in the book. And another teacher invited her students to find out what they could about Nelson Mandela in advance of the textbook reading. To help her class while they read a text, teacher Shobha wrote out a series of questions on sheets of paper. She divided her class into small groups, gave each group the questions and got them to work out the answers as they read. Have you tried a while reading activity like this? They'll read the questions, they find the answers from the text and write the answers in the sheet provided. And there were lots of ideas for post-reading. We've heard about posters being made, follow-up research and group presentations to the class. You're listening to Teaching English Radio India, a series for teachers of English, brought to you by the British Council. Today, our final program is about developing our teaching with a review of some of the key ideas teachers shared in the series. We have talked about students being active rather than passive planning our classes and being creative with the textbook. We've remembered how to find extra resources to use in our teaching and motivating ways to work with reading texts. What else did we hear about in the series? Classroom organization is very important. If you always stand at the front and read or lecture, then students have no chance to try out language. So organizing them to practice in pairs and work in groups is a great idea. This needs clear instructions, of course. And our classroom language should all be in English too, if we want students to realize that English is a means of communication. Here's Rajesh. 
yes i use in use english in the classroom uh, we give some instructions to students and that instructions already known to the students so when they uh, need any permission from us we deliberately tell them ask the permission in english without that we do not permit you to go out finally let's remember that teachers who are working in remote locations don't find it very easy to get further training what ideas for teachers own development have you heard about first there were ways to improve our own english before going to the classroom we should prepare very well sometimes what happens teachers are fearing from the english so teacher should make make friendship with english uh, with reading newspaper listening news or music all that things they can use then when they go in front of the student they can pronounce very well that was a shock with ideas for teachers to increase the regular contact with english listening to radio watching tv reading articles and getting together with other teachers to practice speaking and don't forget writing such as keeping a diary or a blog in english i also suggest staying a step ahead of your students by checking what's coming up next and being ready in advance for the words and phrases that will be needed and what about ways to develop our teaching let's hear from shobha then beena and jitendra in a school there'll be number of teachers working like more than 2 3 where uh, each can have an uh, opportunity to observe each other's class the one who is observing the other teacher's class can give feedback after the observation is completed on different areas of teaching like uh, how the group activity went on how the lesson started off was a teacher dominant or the student was learning happening with the children the teachers i train often come to me and ask me to help them develop their english and uh, i encourage them to form teachers networks where they have uh, like english clubs uh, places where they can go and get together and um, they all feel that uh, teacher support networks have helped them over a period of time to develop their they develop their english Uh, another way that teachers can develop their english is uh, when they are preparing for the lesson that they are about to teach they can actually study the language that is in the lesson uh, they can also ask uh, other teachers of english to help them if they have problems in a specific area first thing is to become aware of their own problems try analyzing how he himself is teaching so it's they who have to come up with a solution and that's why i suggest that they form groups they discuss with each other once you start discussing you'll start finding solutions so ideas for teachers to develop their skills include keep up your own english practice read write listen and speak and stay one step ahead of the learners help each other with friendly peer observation to reflect on and improve your classroom practice get together with other teachers to share ideas materials and problems there are many techniques to improve and develop our teaching so what would you like to try In the series we have heard that teaching and learning in India is changing. We have shared lots of practical tips and ideas for activities that you can try out with your students. And if you get a chance to go on to the internet, the British Council's Teaching English website has lots of materials and ideas. The aim of the series from the British Council has been to discuss ideas so we can all be more effective in the classroom. A big part of that is supporting each other and sharing good practice. So let's keep up the conversation. Many many thanks to all the teachers from around India who have taken part. It is goodbye from me, Manisha Dag and my co-presenter Vibhash Dash. And for the last time, I'm going to wish you happy teaching. Happy teaching.